fishing for us was generations. So it was my father's fisherman and his father before him and so on and so forth. So my father uh, fished boats for years, all for other people, so he always wanted his own boat. Well, he, he got that dream, he did. Heard one and all that it was. Years ago, my father was a young lad, um, and we'd be always talking about fishing. This man said to him one day, they were on a horse and cart going down the back of the hill, and he says, Joe, will you get your boat someday? He said, because I'll tell you why. He says, the Farns used to have boats in Baldoyle before the whole harbour was even built. The turf nest, she was bought out of Cornwall, and uh, my father, uh, my uncle Barney, and my cousin Nicholas went over to bring her back. And the first time I seen her then was when she came into Holt. She was built in 1947, in uh, Fraserburgh. Originally as a heron drifter. And there were several comments about what, what's that man bringing that heap of junk into the harbour for? But it duly turned around, he had her like a new pin. She was a bit rough because divers were using her for um, diving on wrecks and whatnot. So anyway, they brought her over anyway, and we got her up on the lift and uh, the shipwright had a look at her bottom and he says, Jeez, Joe, you did good work to get home in <laughs> her. He says, there's not one nail in that boat's bottom. All the nails, the fastens and all that have corroded because usually you only get 20 or 30 years out of nails in a boat's bottom. He said, no wonder she was leaking on the way over. So anyway, when the boat came, she was, I don't know, seven or eight months ashore. They were fixing her up and putting everything right. He was delighted because my father too, at the same time, uh, he nearly would like to have a boat in a half broken down condition so he could fix her up. I think he really enjoyed fixing the boats up as much as he did just the uh, fishing. It's a great man for the paint and the diesel oil and the timber to keep it right. He thoroughly enjoyed uh, fixing that boat up, so he did. Did a good job, you know. He had it for about 15 or 16 years. And then uh, and uh, near the end, fishing got poor and crews got scarce and things changed and she just wasn't viable for them anymore, so she had to be sold. Joe looked after the boat like a baby. Um, Almost too much so sometimes. <laughs> and I'd say to him, I'd get mad at him. I'd say, Jesus, this boat would be here when you were gone. I says, we'll just stop with the paint and the diesel oil. We used to uh, have a little spray going on. He'd spray the diesel oil where you couldn't get the paint because diesel oil is very good for uh, timber, especially oak. It makes it go hard. It goes hard like a rock. So it's actually better than paint. I'd be giving out to him, but sure he was enjoying what he was doing, so it's not quite me giving out to him, the ball to be here when he's long gone. I used to like talking about old times, it's very good subject, but as I say, I won't say he looked at it objectively, if you know what I mean, it was always through uh, rose tinted glasses. But sure, I didn't mind or whatever. He enjoyed telling the stories and he obviously enjoyed it himself. He could see the romantic side of the job. Lots of fellas wouldn't, it's just it's just a job as such. Fishing, it's a way of life as much as a job, do you know what I mean? I mean, it can be quite hard financially, I mean, Jesus. I think 
and this poor as a church from ice really. But when I look down at the boats now, I just can't for the life of me. You don't feel the store in your heart for them. I don't anyway, it's probably silly, but I don't. You can't say, oh look, there's a boat. Yes. Well, I can't anyway. I like more the, the older style of boats. Uh, the Scotch boats were particularly nice because the boats that built, I suppose, in the uh, 50s and 60s and 40s, they would have just been after the sail era. So they still held some of the nice lines and uh, they built some lovely boats. Not now, they're just like big feckin' water boxes. As my father used to say, <laughs> look at that bloody butter box. They're just big hunks of metal with big powerful engines in them to push them along. And uh, they're just basically a walk horse, that's all. There's not much beauty in them. And you know the way you said your dad um, kind of would look at things through rose tinted. Mm. Do you? Yeah, unfortunately, yes. 